Every country starts out with a different set of natural resources now, and it's really how do you utilize them. So here, for example, you may have wind resources in the west, you may use um, you know, ultra-high voltage networks to get them to the east where the demand is. I don't know, in China, we have an um, imbalanced distribution uh, of renewable. We have a lot of um, production or uh, supply of renewable in northern and uh, northwestern China. Well, most of the, the end users, they are located in coastal and eastern or southeastern area. So that means the transmission might be challenged in terms of technology, in terms of finance or cost. And uh, the other challenge or problem is the variable nature of renewable. Rainy day or sunny day, you have windy day or some day without the wind. So that means the energy storage might be another bottleneck in China. New technologies will be the key. So technologies that are clean, but also more cost effective. So we believe that those technologies exist. Wind and solar are some of them. Uh, certainly technology is always important. Uh, it's always uh, key. And especially, uh, I would also emphasize the mechanism to promote technology adopt quickly and widely uh, in that way. That means that you develop some technology, maybe not so ideally, but you put it into the market and you make some money and make part of the return. Reinvest in innovation or R&D and then you improve your energy and then put the, the new generation of technology into the market in a larger share. And that, that kind of cycle will accelerate the improvement of the technology. In that way, I would say technology innovation will be the core. I mean, if we can set up this kind of cycle, I mean, together with the financial support, the capital cycle, and the technology will be highly developed. As China expands its new energy field, industrialization will require the integration of technological innovation and market assimilation. To create environment for the use of new energy vehicles, China exempts new energy vehicle buyers of consumption tax and provides preferential policy for them. In June 2019, Beijing was the first to terminate preferential policy. By 2020, all local governments in China will put an end to such policies. The new energy vehicle industry is transitioning from being guided by policies to being guided by the market. Meanwhile, China's wind power and photovoltaics have entered an age of competitive pricing. It is expected that by 2020, most photovoltaic power generators in China may become subsidy-free and achieve grid parity. China is the world's top country in energy conservation and new and renewable energy use. The abolishment of new energy vehicle subsidies and grid parity of wind power and photovoltaics are just a small step forward. In the future development of new energy, China will remain the pacemaker.